Greetings in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. My name is Pastor Hilda from Restoration Christian Church. I want to welcome you this beautiful day. And I would like to give a shout out to all the Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. I hope you are spoiled. Enjoy this beautiful day. And we want to thank the Mudaus, um, Mr. and Mrs. Mudau, who, who, who ushered us to this beautiful service. I want you to sit back, invite your family, whosoever you are there with, sit down and watch this service because today is going to be a beautiful day. And I'm excited about today and I can promise you that your life will never be the same. Today we've got a surprise for you. We have got a guest speaker. He's going to be ministering from the other side. And um, I just want to make sure that you can hear me. Um, I'm sure he can hear me. I'm sure he can hear me because he is making sure that everything is okay. So wherever you are, lift up your hands. Let's do it like we'll do it at church. Lift up your hands. Help me welcome and appreciate none other than my own son, Pastor Sean Young. We are crossing over to you. Take it over there. Well, good morning, RCCI. God bless you. It's such an honor to be with you this morning. And I just want to thank, before we continue, to thank Pastor Hilda and the leadership of RCCI for allowing me to come into your space and just to share the Word of God with you and to serve you with the Word of God. And before we begin, to all the mothers, happy, happy Mother's Day. God bless you. May you all be blessed and have a fantastic day. Be blessed by the family. Be blessed by all the children. Uh, I want to encourage you and let you know that you have the fortunate position to be the custodian from bringing that which is in the Spirit and bringing it into the natural. And so I want to say thank you to all the moms out there, to all the praying moms. There's nothing more powerful than a praying mother. So have a fantastic day and God bless you. Enjoy your children. Enjoy your grandchildren if you have any. And just have a blessed, blessed Sunday. Well, this is the new normal. This is the new way that we are having church. And uh, we're just, we're getting used to it. And, you know, just finding our feet. And Pastor Hilda asked me to minister for her. I, you know, we had to get all some logistics sorted out. I had to get the login details for the, the Facebook page and make sure that I'm all set up. And so it's, uh, it's, been, it's been a work in progress. But here we are. And we're going to celebrate the Word of God. We're going to celebrate being together, even if it's, even if it's on, on Facebook and over the airwaves. And um, we're just going to have a good time in the Word of God this morning. And uh, if you are on the broadcast, I want to encourage you to share it with the people around you. Share, hit the share button, and share it with friends and family. And let's get into the Word this morning. Before we get, be, we get in, Let's just quickly give a word of prayer. Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. We thank you for your word. We thank you that your word is powerful. We thank you that your word is like a two-edged sword. We thank you, Lord, that you are God, that you are King of kings and Lord of lords. And Father, this season is maybe a tough season, but you are still on the throne. And we give you praise and honor and glory for it. We thank you for the blood of Jesus that has never lost its power. The blood that still flows today. The blood that still heals today. Father, even now I release the blood of Jesus over every household that is watching. I paint the doorposts of their hearts. I paint the doorposts of their homes and their houses and their lives with the blood. And I thank you, Lord, that no pestilence will come near their dwelling. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. So I want to talk to you this morning about flourishing in the midst of famine. We know that the, globally the world is going through a very, very tough season. A season that it's, that it's never seen in the longest time. But uh, all through the Bible you see that when, when there's difficulty that the people of God has, have always flourished. That the people of God has, have always come out on top. And this is no different. That even through this season, even through this global epidemic that we are going to come out on top as the church of the living God, that we are going to overcome. We're not going to just survive. We're going to overcome in Jesus' name. I know that even in the global economy right now, they have downgraded us to junk status. But I declare to the church of God today that God has upgraded us to blessed status. If you believe that, type amen High five your neighbor. I know if we were in the sanctuary today, I'd hear the loudest amen 
And I do miss the Kononia. So let's just type amen. Let's just give a thumbs up. Give a like. Let's just get together and get behind the word this morning. So I want to speak to you about flourishing in famine. I know that all across uh, the world today there are people struggling. We are not being able to work and earn an income. There's retrenchments happening. People don't have enough food. People don't have money. Uh, but I want to tell you that God is still able to meet your every need exceedingly and abundantly. More than you could ever ask or even think. So I want to take you to the book of Genesis chapter 26 verse 1. It's the story of Isaac, Abraham's son. Genesis chapter 26 verse 1. And the Bible says, Now there was a famine in the land besides the famine in Abraham's time. And Isaac went to Abimelech the king of the Philistines in Gerea. Verse number 2. The Lord appeared to Isaac and said, Do not go down to Egypt. Live in the land where I tell you to live. Dwell in this land and I will be with you and bless you for to you and your descendants I give all these lands and I will perform the oath which I swore to your father Abraham. So Isaac in verse 6 dwelt in Gerar. In verse 11 of chapter 26 so Abimelech charged all his people, saying, He who touches this man's wife, he who touches this man or his wife, shall surely be put to death. The Bible says in 26, Genesis 26, verse 13, The man began to prosper, continued to prosper, until he became very prosperous. In verse 14 of 26, the Bible says, For he had many possessions of flocks and possessions of herds and a great number of servants. So the Philistines envied, envied him. And so this is the story about Isaac who was experiencing famine. He's going through a difficult season in his life. It's a famine that his father had also experienced. And so here we see that what the father went through, the son went through. It was a generational thing. That even through all the generations before the coronavirus, we had things like the Black Plague. We had other epidemics that came across the world. But the bottom line is the church still survived. The church still overcame. And you will overcome. You will do more than survive. You will overcome in Jesus' name. So the Bible says, Now there was a famine in the land besides the previous famine in Abraham's time. And Isaac went to Abimelech, the king of the Philistines in Korea. Famine in the land. Famine means he was unable to eat. There was no food. Famine in the land means that you are, you are unable to sustain or take care of your present circumstance. There are a lot of people today that are unable to pay their rent. A lot of people today unable to pay their bond. A lot of people today who are unable, unable to buy food whose, whose cupboards and fridges are empty. But God is a God who is able to provide. That's why we call him Jehovah Jireh, my provider. The Bible says in Genesis 26 verse 2, The Lord appeared to Isaac and said, Do not go down to Egypt. Live in the land where I tell you. Now man's natural instinct is to move when he starts having lack, when he starts having difficulty, when he doesn't have enough, he now wants to move from that place and go to a place that is prospering. Because where Isaac was, there was a famine. And his natural instinct was to move. And we can put that in today's terms. Those of you that are working, and you're working your job, but it's not paying the bills. It's not, it's not reaching the targets that you wanted to reach as far as taking care of your family. The natural instinct is to do what? To update your CV and to look for something better. Here God says to Isaac, don't go. Don't go down to Egypt. And I want to encourage you, a lot of the times that when we go through these seasons, that we want to move. And not every move is a move that is a movement of up. God says here, don't go down to Egypt. Egypt at that point was a very prosperous place. Egypt had water. Egypt had food. And God says to him, don't go down. I want to encourage you, Church of the Living God, RCCI and those watching, don't go down. Stay. 
Stay where God has planted you. Stay where God has put you. Because it would be in that land that God will prosper you. Verse 3, God says, He says, don't go down. In verse 3, He says, dwell in this land and I will be with you. And I will bless you for you and your descendants. I give all these lands and I will perform the oath I swore to Abraham, your father. So God gives an instruction to Isaac. He says, stay in the land. Stay in this land and I will be with you. I want to encourage you that even in famine, even as we go through a time of famine, even as we go through a time of difficulty and lack, that God says, I will be with you. He, and he says, not only will he be with you, he says, I will bless you. Not only will he bless you, he goes on to say, for you, I will bless you, for you and your descendants. So even in this time of famine, even in this time of lack, even in this time of an epidemic of a virus, God says, dwell in the land because I'm going to be with you. I'm going to bless you. Not only will I bless you, I'm going to bless your descendants. Because we've got to understand that God is a generational God. He's a God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And if He's about to bless you, your offspring will be blessed. So we've got to stay put. I'm looking for a church that is willing to stay. I'm looking for a church who has staying power, even though it's difficult and even though the circumstances are tough. We need a church of God that has staying power. God didn't put us here just to fly. He put us here to occupy. He put us here to be a blessing and to be blessed in the midst of of a time when there is difficulty and in the midst of a time where there is lack and poverty and, and just people are just losing their minds out here. God is calling on the church to stay put because where we stay, God is going to bless us even in this land. So the Bible says in verse number 6, So Isaac dwelt in Gerar. The word Gerar means lodging place. And we know that we have lodges. It's a place to stay. A lodge is not a permanent setting. A lodge is not a, a place where you stay permanently. It is a permanent building. But you as an individual don't stay there. If I go to, uh, to Venda, there is, is a lodge there. I can't remember the name. But I know the, there's a family man of God that, that, that takes care of that lodge. But if, should I go there one day, I will go there and stay in that lodge. But that is not my permanent dwelling place. Even though there is a permanent structure, it's not where I'm going to stay. And so God tells Isaac, listen, stay in Gerar for this season. But it's not, it's not your destination. It's just part of your journey. And so understand that as we go through this time, it is not our final destination. It is only part of the journey. And we've got to keep walking. David says this in Psalm 23. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. And the operative word there is walking through. David didn't say, yea, though I pitch my tent. Yea, though I stay in the valley of death. He says, yea, though I walk through it. And I want to encourage you as RCCI and everybody else that's watching. We're going to walk through this valley. That the God of the mountain is also the God of the valley. That the God of prosperity is also the God that's going to be with you when you have have just enough but I want to tell you that God when you have just enough he can take that and turn it to, into more than enough the boy with the two fish and the five loaves he never had enough to feed the five thousand but in the hands of Jesus in the hands of the Almighty God what was not enough became more than enough because after the five thousand were fed there were 12 baskets left over. I'm speaking to you today and prophesying you today that even though you may not have enough now, when we are done, when this season is over, there will be more than enough in Jesus' name. If you believe it, type Amen. Clap your hands wherever you're sitting. Genesis 26 verse 11. So Abimelech charged all his people saying, He who touches this man, or his wife shall surely be put to death. You see, when you stay in the land where God has told you to stay, when you obey God, when you stay in a place where it makes no sense to stay, when you stay in a place where things are difficult, and when God says, I'm going to be with you, I'm going to bless you, not only is God going to bless you, but He's going to cause those in authority to give you favor. Because it was the king who charged these people not to touch 
this man of God. And I believe right now this morning that you have the favor of God on your life. That no pestilence will come near your dwelling. That the favor of God will cause you to have the blessing even in the midst of of a famine even in the midst of not enough that you and your household will have more than enough in Jesus name you will be protected you will be you will be covered by the blood and the by the anointing of God in this season Abimelech said don't touch this man don't touch his wife so what he was saying is don't touch the man don't touch the seed and don't touch that which would bear the seed and bring forth the fruit meaning his wife so i'm telling you this morning that god that god is going to cause an instruction to come over your house and speak to the enemy and say don't touch the seed don't touch the seed you cannot touch the seed and if you cannot touch the seed you cannot touch the one which bears the seed and ultimately ultimately bears fruit and i speak that over your life this morning that no devil in hell will touch your seed in jesus name no devil in hell will touch that which would bear fruit and bring harvest to your life in this season in jesus name and the bible says in 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 Genesis 26 13 the man began to prosper and continued to prosper until he became very prosperous but in the previous verse God Isaac goes and, he, and, and the Bible says and Isaac sowed in that land he sowed in that land and the key right now for us as the church of God as the people of God even though we are in the midst of famine and God has instructed us to stay well, God has instructed us to occupy not to fly our responsibility right now as the people of God is to sow in this time to sow in this land famine meant that there was nothing to eat that it was not conducive to sow seed that it didn't make sense to put seed into the ground because there was famine the bible says that isaac sowed in that land and he reaped in the same here and so i want to encourage you this morning that you may not have enough right now to feed your presence but if you've got seed you've got enough to to prepare for the future Come on, we've got to prepare for the future. I know it looks bleak right now, but God is not surprised by what is going on. God is not shocked by what is going on. He didn't get knocked off the throne and said, where did this virus come from? God is still in control. He is the, he's the Alpha. He is the Omega. He is the beginning and the end. He sees everything all at the same time. He knows your beginning from the end. He knows what you're going through. He knows what you're yet to go through. Your future is His past. Understand this, that God is able to do exceedingly abundantly more. So when Isaac obeyed God and he stayed in the land that was not conducive for bearing fruit, not conducive for, for doing well and, and having income and doing what he needed to get done, the Bible says he sowed in that land. And in the same year, he reaped a harvest. And I'm going to speak to you now and prophesy to you now. If you take hold of this word and you begin to sow whatever seed you've got, it may be money, it may be time, it may be a, a, a bag of sugar, it may be a bag of rice to a neighbor, it may be a plate of food, but whatever you're able to sow, sow it today. Continue to sow because as you begin to sow, you're preparing for the future. You're preparing for what's, what's coming. And the Bible says he reaped in the same year and i'm going to speak to you now you're not going to reap when COVID 19 is over you're not going to reap when this epidemic is over you're going to reap while we are still in this season you're going to reap in a season where it doesn't make sense to reap and when that happens only god can get the glory for that in jesus name i isaac reaped in the same here he reaped in a land that was not conducive for harvest and i'm gonna i'm speaking to you now and saying as you obey god and begin to sow whatever seed you've got you're gonna reap in the same here you're gonna reap in this year you're gonna reap in this season you're not gonna wait for the summer season God is able to cause you to reap now. Your harvest is coming through now. As you sow your seed of whatever it is, if it be time, if it be money, if it be food, if, if it just be loving somebody, you're going to reap in this season. 
you're going to reap in this time. If you believe this word, type amen, give a thumbs up, high five your wife, your brother, your sister, who is ever sitting next to you. I feel the anointing in this place right now to say to you that we as the church of God will reap in this land. We will reap in this time when Moody's has downgraded us to junk status. God has upgraded us to blessed beyond measure status. If you believe that, say amen. I know people are saying all kinds of things. There are a whole lot of voices coming at you. But the only thing that matters is the word. And God says, I will be with you. And I will prosper you. And I will cause my word to come to fruition in your life. And I believe that in Jesus' name. And so the Bible says in verse number 13 that the man began to prosper. That there is, there is a beginning of prosperity, which means there is an ending of lack. The Bible says the man began to prosper. The man began to prosper. The man began to prosper, which means at some point, lack has to end. At some point, being broke, busted, and disgusted has to end. At some point, retrenchment letters have to end. At some point, uh, joblessness has to end. At some point, this virus has to end because the man began to prosper. And this is the time I speak to you now and say, you are going to begin to prosper from now in this season when people say it doesn't make sense when people say you're not going to make it you're going to begin to prosper you're going to begin to become well in fact with those of you that are thinking you're going to get retrenched i believe that god is able to get you promoted in jesus name when people say you're not going to have enough i believe god is going to cause you to have more than enough in jesus name and so the man began to prosper and he continued to prosper. Understand that there's a beginning of prosperity. But there's also a continuation of prosperity. That not only will you begin to, begin to prosper now. But you will continue to prosper in the days to come. You see as the church we've made the mistake of living from blessing to blessing. From miracle to miracle. That is not God's plan for our lives. God wants to live in the continuous blessing. In continuous prosperity. To always have enough. To always have more than enough. The Bible says the man began to prosper and continue to prosper and he began to prosper in a time where people had nothing and so there are people all over the world and even even all over South Africa right now they're struggling they don't have enough but God is going to cause you to begin to prosper in this season if you believe what I'm saying say amen this morning if you believe what I'm saying take a hold of this word and make it and Add your faith to it and put works to it and begin to go out and be a blessing to somebody this morning. And so the man began to prosper in a time that there was famine. The man began to prosper in a time where everybody around him did not have enough. You see, whenever God is going to initiate something, he's always going to have a man. And today I want you to be that man and be that woman. Put up your hand and say, God, use me. Let me be the shining light to begin to prosper in a time of famine. To begin again, begin to prosper when businesses are closing down. For those of you that have businesses, I declare over you that you will not close your doors. That God will cause business to come to you even now in this season. That those businessmen out there, I know, I know some of you by name, I speak to you now and say, God will cause you to prosper prosper in the time of famine in fact you will not have enough time you will not have enough resource to handle all that God is about to bring to you that your doors will not close in Jesus name those of you that are employed you will not receive a retrenchment letter in Jesus name they may go through the process but you will not partake in that process I speak the blood of Jesus over every single one of you and I say to you today today will be the day that you begin to prosper and you will continue to prosper until the bible says the man began to prosper and continued to prosper until he became very prosperous you see he began to prosper and continued to prosper until he became 
You see, there comes a point in prosperity where you become prosperity, where you actually are prosperity. Wherever you walk, people look at you and they can see that God is on your life, that you have an anointing on your life, that no matter what is going on around you, that you for some reason have enough and more than enough. And I speak to you this morning and I say to you today and in the futures to come, you will become prosperity. Prosperity will become you. You won't have to look for finances. Finances will find you. You won't have to look for opportunities. Opportunities will find you. You won't have to look for the right people and the right connections. The right connections will find you in Jesus' name. The Bible says in, 20, in Genesis 26 verse 14, for he had possessions of flocks and possessions of herd and a great number of servants. So the Philistines envied him. During this season, as you begin to prosper and continue to prosper and now become prosper, prosperous, the Bible says here that the Philistines began to envy him. I declare to you that today you will be the envy of those around you. You will be the envy of those in your workplace. Oh, why, why is he getting a raise in this time? Why is he getting promoted? And why are other people getting retrenched? Uh, businessmen, you will be the envy of the business world. Listen, I'm having to close my doors, but why is this man getting blessed? Why is this man getting more contracts? Why is this man being able to keep his doors open? That's because you are... Are prosperous you are not becoming prosperous you are not continuing to be prosperous you are now prosperity in its entirety and I speak that over you in Jesus name as the church of RCCI every member every family member connected to you that you shall overcome and that we will get through this in Jesus name not only will we get through this but we will come out being prosperous in Jesus name Name. We will be the envy of the business world. We will be the envy of, of the church world even. We will be the envy of our neighbors. Man, some of your neighbors are not able to eat, but you're eating and you're feasting. And what you can do, you take a plate of food over to them and say, God bless you. And they'll say to you, but how is it that you're able to give food away when we, can't, we don't even have enough? And you can share about the Jehovah Jireh, the, the God who is able to do exceedingly abundantly more. The God who provides. The God God who is able to do what people say cannot be done. The Bible, Bethlehem is, means the house of bread. It is time for the church to become the house of bread. It's time for the church to stand up and be a place where the nations and the city can be fed by us in Jesus' name. And so we will continue to prosper. We will become prosperous. I want to end off by saying this to you. That the famine that Isaac went through was not broken by the harvest. The Bible says that he sowed in that land and he reaped in the same year. The, the famine was not broken by the harvest. The famine was broken by the seed. I'll say that again. The famine was not broken by the harvest. The famine was broken by the seed. That's why when the king spoke and said, don't touch this man or his wife, what he was saying was, do not touch the seed. Because the man is the carrier of the seed. He said, don't touch the seed. And then he even spoke over the wife. He says, don't touch the man. Don't touch this man. Don't touch his wife. Don't touch the seed. Don't touch the seed bearer. And don't touch the one who is going to give birth to the harvest. And so God spoke a protective blessing over the process of seed, time, and harvest. See, through every season, that every season is going to pass. But the seasons that won't change is seed, time, and harvest. The coronavirus is going to pass. COVID-19 is going to pass. But seed, time, and harvest shall remain. And so even in this season, if you don't have enough to feed your today, you have a seed to prepare for your tomorrow. So I'm going to encourage you right now that whatever seed you've got, begin to go out and sow it. Find somebody to bless. You know, if you've got the church's bank account and you don't have enough to feed your family, it's seed. Sow it. Because I guarantee you that when you sow, God is able to, to cause you to have more than enough. The Bible says, I've never seen the righteous forsaking or their seed begging for bread. If you are the righteous... 
God will never forsake you. And your seed will never be begging for bread. What that means is, I've never seen the righteous forsaken. My father was a righteous man. God never forsook him. God never left him. I've seen God in his life do a lot of miracles and, 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 and just do such amazing things. The Bible says, I've never seen the righteous forsaken or their seed begging for bread. See, my father was a righteous man. God never forsook him. And because he is the righteous man, I am his seed. And the Bible says, because I am his seed, I will never be begging for bread. And so today, God covers you in your entirety. God covers you in the whole process of seed, time, and harvest. The devil cannot touch your seed. And he cannot touch your harvest in Jesus' name. And so... Like I said, famine was not broken by the harvest. It's broken by the seed. And Isaac could not feed his presence because of the famine. But he could sow seed to prepare for his future. And so wherever you are this morning, wherever you find yourself this morning, you may not even had any breakfast. You may not paid your rent. You may not paid any of your bills. But if you've got seed, you may not be able to feed your present, but you can sow and prepare for your future. That is what Isaac did. He couldn't eat, but he could sow. Uh, he couldn't pay rent, but he could sow. Uh, he, he, he couldn't buy food, but he could sow. And so what he couldn't do today, he prepared to have in abundance for tomorrow. If you can't, if you can't eat today, I'm telling you right now, when you sow seed, you'll have an abundance for tomorrow. If, you, if you're struggling to pay whatever bills, if you can't do it today, you sow your seed, you're going to have an abundance tomorrow. Because I believe in a God who will cause you to come out of this, not just survive, but overcome. Not just survive, but come out with the blessing of God on your life. Just like the children of Israel who worked all those years for the Egyptians. They were slaves. They worked themselves to the bone. But when God says enough was enough, they didn't walk out of Egypt empty-handed. They walked out with all the spoils. They walked out with all the gold. They walked out with all the silver. They walked out with all the livestock. They walked out with everything that Egypt had taken from them. And I'm here to speak to you, the church of the living God, that we're going to walk out of this pandemic with the blessing of God on our lives. We're going to walk out of this season with more than enough. We're going to walk out of this season with an anointing greater than what we've ever seen or heard before. We're going to walk out with giftings. This is a time where you can just seek the face of God. This is the time where you can just spend some time in prayer. Spend some time with your family. Because I'm telling you now, when all is said and done, we're coming out of this greater, stronger, more anointed, more gifted, more wiser, more full of the power of God, more full of the glory of God. I say to you now that this is not the end, that this is not over, that God is still on the throne. The Bible says when Job went through what he went through, there's a, there's a line that says, and after this, I want to tell you that there is an after this, that there is an after coronavirus, there is an after not enough, there is an after being sick and afflicted. I'm telling you now, that we are the church of the living God. And if we can stay the course, if we can stay in this land, if we can stay where God has called us and sow in this land and give in this land, that we will walk out of here, in this here, being more blessed than ever, being more anointed than ever, having more than enough so that we can be a blessing to others. And so here's my last key, that it's not, it's not the harvest that broke the famine. It's the seed. There is power in the seed. There is power in the seed. If you don't have enough to eat, but you've got seed, sow that seed, and you will see that when time comes for harvest in this year, in Jesus' name, you will walk out with more than enough. You will be the envy of the business world. You will be the envy of your extended family. But don't look to, don't look to, to, to be the envy. Look to be a blessing. Look to be a blessing. Look to be a giver. Look to be someone who is able to do what others said you cannot do. And so you may not, like Isaac, could not feed his present because of the famine. But he could sow for the future. And that is my encouragement to you today. That as, as I end off uh, this word of God. To say that church of God. You may not have enough for today. But if you've got seed, you can sow for your tomorrow. That's why the Bible says, Jesus prayed. He says, when the disciples says, teach us how to pray, 
one of the one of the lines in the prayer was give us today our daily bread and we like to go through seasons of having monthly groceries i understand that but sometimes you're going to go through a season of daily bread you're going to go through a season of daily bread where god is going to take care of you daily you don't have enough for 30 days but when you wake up tomorrow morning there's something for god has supplied somehow some way you can pay a bill you can buy some food. You can put some petrol in the car. We live in a time where some of us are dealing with a daily bread situation. But that's okay. Because if you've got seed, you can sow for your future. In Jesus' name. I'm going to close off in prayer. And I'm going to say goodbye. So I'm going to ask you to bow your heads wherever you are. Just lift your hands to heaven. And let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you, Lord, that you are God of more than enough, that you are Jehovah Jireh. We thank you, Lord, for everybody that has listened to this broadcast. I thank you that faith has come up in their hearts, that faith has come up, and that they will take this faith and they not just be hearers of the word, but be doers of the word. Father, I pray a special blessing on every person that has watched this program. And God, I thank you that no pestilence will come near their dwelling, that every need shall be supplied in the name of Jesus. And I thank you right now. I speak into the future and I say, your best is yet to come. That better is the end of a matter than the beginning thereof. I thank you right now. In Jesus' name, our best is yet to come. There is more than enough. I thank you, Father, that as we begin to sow a seed in this time of famine, that we will reap in the same here. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless you. I love you. I'm hoping to meet up with you guys soon at the Century and uh, just have church with you. I'm looking for the first Sunday. I'm not even going to go to LGCC. Sorry, Dr. Hammond, but I will be at RCCI. But just on on LGCC, God bless you. For those of you who have watched, I want to wish LGCC a very happy 11th birthday. We are 11 years old today. God has been good in Jesus' name. God bless you, RCCI. I love you, and I hope to see you soon.